well friends this is again a concept or you can say two concepts are there but uh, concept relating to error and concept relating to fraud and in earlier classes we had discussed the difference between these two any one of you can tell me what is the difference between an error and an fraud what is an error what is an fraud at a very broad level can you identify whether a particular misstatement is an error or fraud can anyone so uh, fraud is an act that is intentionally carried out to benefit certain individual okay. uh, and cause a detrimental effect to others right. and uh, right. well uh, errors are act of unintentional mis okay so one point we have understood that normally frauds are intentional errors are unintentional right and how we are concerned with the error and fraud is that errors and frauds are fine but if the errors and frauds are material and they lead to or they bring a kind of material misstatement in the financial statement then that is our concern error and fraud may exist in the financial statement but because of this error and fraud if financial statements are misstated then what will happen that it will not show a true and fair view okay so auditor's opinion will change in that situation are you getting yes sir so when applying audit procedures auditor applies many audit procedures to verify the transaction to examine the transaction and these are basically normal audit procedures normal audit procedure means auditor believes that the financial statement is showing true and fair view right auditor starts his examination with the assumption that there is no error and fraud and on that basis he applies normal audit procedure for each transaction let us say there are fixed as fixed asset you he may ask show me the fixed asset register if something is purchased show me the bills show me the store records show me the gate entry evidence right he may physically verify These are certain audit procedures. Through these procedures, auditor satisfies that the financial statement is showing this much of fixed assets, and actually this much of fixed asset is existing. Okay. Similarly, let us say he finds this much of salary has been paid. He may ask for salary register. He may ask for the bank entry for the payment. He may check the attendance. How many people are there? So, like this, certain audit procedures are applied. Normal audit procedures are applied. to ensure that the financial figures are actually true and fair okay but when this normal procedures are applied in certain situation auditor may automatically detect some error and fraud okay if error and frauds are there it may be come into light it may come into light when this kind of procedures are exercised yes or no Yes. Yeah. Right. And once auditor finds, auditor makes a takes a note of this that these are the errors found, these are the frauds found, and then auditor has to apply his mind that uh, because of this thing, whether financial statement is going to be materially misstated. Right. And auditor draws conclusion, and on that basis he decides that what kind of reports can be issued, whether. clean report or qualified report or adverse report or it decides on that basis okay now even if you know what is error and what is fraud lastly we'll be quickly recapitulating that part then we'll understand we'll try to understand certain reasons behind this error and fraud so very quickly we'll be covering this slide i'm going to share the screen with you yeah are you seeing it is it visible to you 
Yes, sir. Slides are visible. Right. You see, or you already know that accounting or preparation of financial statement involves human beings. So human involvement cannot be avoided. There is always a significant human element in preparation of financial statement. And when human involvement are there, so there is always possibility of mistakes, possibilities of error, and also possibilities of fraud. And if major frauds exist or major misstatements are exist, the financial statement cannot show true and fair. No account can be considered true and fair if substantial errors and frauds remain. They will distort the picture and financial statement cannot show the true and fair reach. So audit techniques and processes are carried on to bring to light these errors and frauds. Right? But normally, audit techniques and procedures are not specifically directed to reveal them. But the normal application process, through the normal application process, the errors and, uh, errors and frauds are normally detected. And in that context, one has to remember, or we have to remember, that there should be some kind of control over this error and fraud. And this con installation of this control device, and installation of this control, uh, let us say, any kind of control mechanism is the responsibility of the management. Management has to think of some kind of control device or errors are minimized. Errors are not there. Or frauds are not there. So management is responsible. Okay. So auditor, what auditor does, auditor may discover the area where control is weak, control is not foolproof, control is inadequate. He may make some practical suggestion to the management. These are the areas where control is weak, which needs to be strengthened. Otherwise, there is a possibility of mistake, there is a possibility of the fraud. And earlier also we have discussed a uh, few points relating to auditor's responsibility as regards to fraud. And we have also seen that in a given situation, whether auditor can be considered negligent of his duty or not. So on this basis, all these four points, on the basis of these four points, that decision can be taken whether auditor is negligent or not. One is whether auditor has exercised reasonable skill while carrying out his work. So in the specific situation, we have to see whether auditor has exercised reasonable skill. If he has exercised reasonable skill, then he is not guilty of negligence. But let us say he has not exercised reasonable skill, then what will happen? He'll be guilty or not? Yes, sir. Yes. So reasonable skills has to be exercised. So you have to remember, auditor need to exercise reasonable skill. Auditor has to also document or he has to record that what kind of reasonable skills he has exercised. Then we have to test whether errors and frauds were such that they could have been detected in ordinary course of checking. That means they are not deep layer fraud. That means it could have been e easily detected. In ordinary course of checking, it could have been detected. If that is so, and still auditor has not detected, then auditor is negligent. But the nature of error and fraud is that it could not have been detected in ordinary course of checking. Then auditor is not negligent. Third test is that whether auditor has any reason to suspect the existence of fraud and error. Circumstances might be such that anybody will suspect that there is a fraud or there is an error. But still, auditor has not suspected. In that case, auditor will be regarded as negligent. Otherwise, auditor is not auditor cannot be considered, cannot be regarded as a negligent auditor. Fourth test is that whether error and fraud are so deflated that the same might not have been detected by application of normal audit procedures. That means auditor always applies normal audit procedure. But these errors and frauds are so depleted that normal audit procedure cannot detect them. Then auditor is not negligent. Otherwise, if not, it could have been detected by a normal audit procedure and still auditor has not detected, then auditor will be negligent. 
right? This chart earlier I had shown you whether auditor has exercised reasonable skill. If you know, he's negligent. If yes, then you have to test. Could have been detected in ordinary course of checking. If it is yes, auditor is negligent. But no, auditor is not negligent. Is there any reason to suspect? If yes, auditor is negligent. If no, auditor is not negligent. We have to again test whether the fraud and error is deep laid. If yes, auditor is not negligent. But if no, auditor is not negligent. Auditor is negligent. Okay, this chart explains uh, that various basis on which we can decide whether auditor has performed his duty properly or not. Okay, I think you are familiar with this, is it not? I had shown you earlier. Yes, sir. Okay, and now we'll be discussing some reasons for errors and fraud that is important for us. Why errors come? Why frauds come? Some of these points also already discussed. I think uh, the reasons for errors were discussed earlier, but reasons for fraud we have not discussed. So first we'll complete this error, then we'll go to fraud reason. Ignorance of generally accepted accounting principles. This one reason that if the management is ignorant of the accounting principle, there will be error. If there is carelessness in doing accounting work, or if there is some desire to conceal the effect of defalcation and shortages, then also there will be error and fraud. There is a possibility of error and fraud. Management willing to conceal something. There is some defalcation or shortages in stock or shortages in asset. Management wants to hide that thing. Then there will be error and fraud. If there is any tendency of the management to permit prejudice or bias to influence the interpretation of the transaction, management may be prejudiced or biased to misinterpret a transaction. Okay. And this kind of situation, if management has that kind of tendency, so that may lead to an error and fraud. Management, if management has a desire to minimize the tax, then also error and fraud may appear. Intentional efforts committed by the person in the positions or authority to show up the picture. Management may be willing to show up the picture, which is not the truth, or to depress the picture. Sometimes management want to show higher sale or higher profit. Sometimes they want to lower profit to save tax like this. Okay, or to convert an error to a personal benefit. If somebody is personally interested in a transaction, personally interested in a financial figure, they may also commit fraud. So these are some reasons, as you can see, because of which error and fraud may occur. Okay, did you understand this thing or you want to explain me in detail? You want me to explain? Or so understood. understood all these points? No query about this? Fine. Now, coming to this type of error and fraud, you might be knowing what is self-revealing and non-self-revealing error or fraud, unintentional or intentional, unconcealed or concealed fraud, then fraud or error that affects general ledger balance or not affecting general ledger balance or procedural errors. This and earlier classes I had discussed, self-revealing means automatically it can be revealed, maybe wrong totaling, maybe part of the journal entry is made correctly, other part is incorrect. So the trial balance will throw a mismatch. So uh, that can be easily detected. That is called as self-revealing error. Then intentional errors. Normally errors are unintentional, frauds are intentional, but there might be, sometimes there might be, uh, there might be some frauds which may be unintentional or some errors which might be intentional also. Right. So this thing happens in two ways. Let us say intentional fraud and error. One is fraudulent financial reporting. That means financial reports are incorrect. It con contains manipulation, falsification, alteration of accounting records, misrepresentation, or intentional omissions, or intentional misapplication of accounting principles. All these three things will lead to fraudulent financial reporting. Financial reporting will be incorrect. 
or there might be misappropriation of assets misappropriation of cash goods or misappropriation of accounts to manipulate tax dividend remuneration so these are some reasons which may bring into intentional errors and frauds okay then one specific kind of fraud called as defalcation of cash it may happen in this way i had explained you earlier it seems by inflating cash payments cash payments are increased in various ways making fictitious payments inflating payments uh, inflating the amounts in payment vouchers manipulating wage roll by including dummy workers casting wrong ledger total so this means cash payments are inflated and the difference is misappropriated or it may happen by suppressing the receipt that means receipts are understated and the difference is misappropriated one method is teaming and leading you know what is the concept of teaming and leading that means when money is received from one customer that is misappropriated but subsequently if money is received from elsewhere the previous customer is credited so money received from one customer is misappropriated but he is subsequently credited with the payments received from another customer so no account is kept outstanding for a long period of time to explain this let me give you this example let us say every day some customer is coming and making you payment so what one person can do payment received from the a is misappropriated is kept in his pocket it's not taken in books of account right but next day when payment will receive from b a's account will be credited b's amount will be not be credited next day when payment will receive from c now b's account will be credited and c's amount will not be credited when d will give c's account will be credited so continuously accounts are managed in such a way that at no account is kept outstanding for long period and the person is enjoying money his money is in his pocket he has misappropriated the money but if any times he will be caught he will say okay the last account only d account i have not posted i will be posting it tomorrow but actually he is following a method which is called as the teaming and leading and he has misappropriated the money that is one way of doing the falcation of cash then fictitious repayments or fictitious discounts actual discounts are not given but treated in books of account the writing of of debts debts may be written off non accounting of cash sales non accounting of miscellaneous receipts then writing out writing down asset values okay these are some of the ways through which cash is defalcated or by wrong casting or wrong totaling of the cash books or petty cash book cash may be defalcated these are the some situations defalcation of the cash and coming to another kind of fraud which may happen due to misappropriation of the goods cash misappropriation may be little easy to detect but goods misappropriation is little difficult to detect so management need to put some other kind of control some kind of measure to do, check this thing like physical access control periodic checks ratio analysis this help to detect these are quite helpful to detect misappropriation of goods right and uh, there might be fraud regarding manipulation of the accounts accounts may be manipulated normally when accounts are manipulated higher management people are involved why they manage why they manipulate maybe to avoid tax or to declare dividend or to withhold a dividend or to manipulate the remuneration payable based on profit so accounts are managed like this if some commission to manage commission to manager is payable on the basis of profit then profit may be manipulated to get a higher commission so these are some examples of manipulation of accounts then one more kind of error is concealed or unconcealed error mistakes are unconcealed or frauds are concealed but there might be exception to that sometimes people commit fraud and purposefully leave it unconcealed so that nobody will doubt 
they keep it so open that people will not doubt the situation that chance is also there and uh, procedural error is a kind of error it is in fact uh, when transactions are recorded it involves both records and procedures let us some defined procedures are there which are not followed then it is a procedural error let us say purchase has been made but accounted properly but the method of purchase has not been followed right the procedure which is prescribed in the purchase manual has not been followed then that is a procedural error procedural errors are also error that shows weak internal control okay there are other ways to correct error like this error of omission omission means transaction is wholly or partly omitted then errors of commission where transaction is misrecorded totally or partially the compensating error for two errors exactly counterbalance each other okay one, one error is you can say rectified by another error that is called a compensating error then error of principle accounting principles are not followed or the procedures prescribed by the organization are not followed they are called procedural errors so like this we can classify the errors under few other categories also once we have understood these are the errors and these are the frauds now we'll see what is the responsibility of the auditor as regards to error and error some fraud okay so we'll stop here in this session we'll next class we'll be covering with the responsibility of the auditor as regards to error and fraud and we'll continue our discussion uh, in uh, at that point of time also we'll be understanding what are the various reasons or what are the circumstances that indicate the existence of fraud that is also important for us is it clear to you up to this yes or no yes so understood okay you see day by day topic will become more and more technical so you have to you have to take some extra effort to understand these issues so we'll catch up with some other issues in our next class some other concepts in fact in our next class thank you very much thanks